In this video, I'm going to show you how to replace the fuel injector on this Chevy Silverado 2500 with a 6.0 liter engine. To do this job, we're going to have to remove the fuel rails, so let's install these TRQ injectors. Before we disconnect anything and really get going on the job, I recommend pulling the fuel pump fuse while the vehicle is running. That stops the fuel pump from pumping, and therefore, as the engine is running, it'll use up the rest of the pressure that's in the rail. And then when you disconnect the lines, it's not going to spray at you. If you don't want to do this, don't, but I highly recommend it. In the underhood fuse box, which is this large cover here, look at it right next to your brake master cylinder. Once you pop that cover off, you'll see this relay here. This is the fuel pump relay. That little 25 amp fuse, not this one, but that one is also the fuel pump fuse. Pull one of these two. It's easier to pull the relay. As the vehicle's running, that will shut the fuel pump off and do exactly what I said. Let's disconnect the battery, and I'm just going to disconnect the negative terminal on this one. My truck has two batteries. I'm going to show you how to disconnect both. If you just have one, it'll just be this one right here. There's the passenger side firewall right behind your coolant overflow tank. So let's grab a 10 millimeter socket and loosen up this mounting nut that holds down the negative battery terminal. Once it's loose enough, you can just grab it, pull it aside, and make sure that you put it somewhere where it cannot bounce back onto the terminal. I'm going to tuck it right behind there like that. There's no way it's going to come up by itself. At this point, if you just had this one battery, you're done. It's disconnected. I actually have two batteries on this truck, so let me show you how to disconnect the other one. The other one is right behind the driver's side headlight. Same thing applies here. Grab a 10 millimeter, loosen up the mounting nut. It's the same style terminal. Once you loosen it up enough, you should be able to wiggle it right off that battery and just put it down here. Obviously, there's no way it's going to come up by itself. At this point, you have all the power disconnected to the vehicle, so we can continue with our job. Now remove the engine cover, pull straight up on it, and forward. I need to remove this air intake tubing here, the snorkel piece. So I'm going to take the hose clamp off of the throttle body. There's another hose clamp on your air filter housing. We'll get to that one in a second. Use an 8mm socket or a flathead screwdriver and loosen this clamp up. You don't have to take it off or loosen it all the way, just enough to move this around. On the air filter housing right next to the mass airflow sensor, you have another similar looking clamp. Loosen this one up as well. Now you can pull this off of here. Okay. And take the rest off as well. Set it aside. At the back of the intake on the top, you'll see this plastic retainer plate. This holds down these two main wiring harnesses, which we will have to move out of the way so that the crossover part of the rail can pull up and off of the engine. You can sneak these wiring harnesses past. Or if you want, you can unbolt the three 10 millimeter screws, but there's plenty of space to just pull these out of the way. Let's get a little bit more slack out of this harness. I'm going to pull the heater hoses off of this bracket so I can get this harness up and over the transmission dipstick tube. Push these out of the way like that for now. Next, I need to unplug all the injectors on this side so I can free up the harness, but also they can't stay plugged in when I pull them out. So if you look, there's gonna be this green lock. We have to pry that lock upwards. To do that, you could use a little screwdriver or a pick, whatever you have, just try not to break it. Once the lock is up, you'll be able to grab the injector right by this gray clip here, press it and slide it up. Repeat this process seven more times for all of the injectors. Okay, get those wires set aside, but obviously don't interchange them. Make sure they stay where they are so they go back on the same injector, obviously. And at this point, it looks like we have fairly clear access here. Working our way towards the other side, let's remove this 10 millimeter nut that holds the bracket for this main harness on. Pull this up and off. This is a small delicate connector here, so let's unplug it. This is for the map sensor. Just press on the tab, pull the connector away. I just don't want to accidentally pull on it and break it. So just set that aside. It's hard to see, but on the back of the valve cover here, you have a PCV line. It's got a tab that you have to pry out on and then up. Up at the top here, we have this PCV line. Be very careful when you take this off. You might actually have to uh, remove this stud in order to clear it a little bit safer without breaking it. It is a plastic line. I'm gonna take the mounting stud off. 10 millimeter socket or wrench. Typically a socket doesn't really fit over this. And uh, once you break it free with a wrench, you can loosen it up by hand. 
hopefully it's not too rusty. But then once you take it off, that will allow you to pull this line a lot better this way so we can take it out of here. Just pull straight up. Okay, just let this hang over here. Now let's get some wires cleared off from this side. This is a positive battery wire. I'm just gonna put it up and over here. This main harness has quite a bit of wiggle room to it. You don't have to unplug the main power wire for the alternator, but I will unplug this small connector and pull it aside just because it's attached to the main wiring harness and I don't wanna tug on the wires too much. This gives us the space to pull this back quite far enough in order to clear this entire area off. Let's unplug some of these lines that go into this EVAP valve. Take the connector off and then you can press down on this. That should allow you to get the line off. Twist and pull. You can leave this one connected and you can pull straight up on this. This will come right off and you can just turn this to the side like that. And now unplug the injectors on this side the same exact way you unplugged them on the other side. Now we have to disconnect the fuel rail to do that. There's a lock. I'm going to push this lock off of the back of the line here, up like this. There we go. Get that off. Slide it forward now and off the line. There's quite a bit of dust on that connection, so I'm going to blow with some compressed air. I don't want any of it getting into the fuel, clogging up the injectors later down the line. Now you need one of these special quick disconnect line fittings, and it's a 3 8 line. So use the 3 8 fitting, push forward on this line coming in from the fuel pump, and then push this fitting in. Once it clicks into place, you should be able to wiggle that. Okay. And at this point, once the fitting is in, or the disconnect tool, pull on all of these, and there's the fuel line. Obviously there is fuel everywhere, so watch out for that. I don't recommend using electric power tools at this point. There are two eight millimeter bolts on each side of the fuel rail. So that means four in total, remove all four, so we can take the fuel rails out. Do the same on the other side. Now you have to very gently pry evenly forward, backward, left, right, everywhere. Basically these are connected with a hard line so they all have to come up as a unit. Watch out where you pry. Uh, don't damage things. Don't pry on plastic components, electrical connectors, hoses, anything like that. Twisting the injectors can help. It can break the o-rings free. Once one comes out, you can just keep on working it until they all pop out. Believe it or not, spraying a little bit of brake parts cleaner down where the injector goes actually helps. Oh, oh there's one rail. Do the same to the other side. Oh. Now you can pull the fuel rail straight up and out as an assembly. I'm only going to show you how to replace one injector at this point because the procedure is identical for all eight. I'm going to take a pick, pry out this locking clip that holds the injectors down. Sometimes you might have to pry it out first. Try not to bend it though. These are going to have to be reused to reinstall so you can lock them in. And now the injector should come right out if you just wiggle and twist. Fuel comes out, of course. There's still fuel on the fuel rail. But there's your old injector. Take your new one. Make sure you don't put it on backwards, of course. Line it up. Press it in. The fact that there's fuel there will actually help because it'll allow the O-ring to slide right in. Bottom it out. In order to make things easier, I'm going to turn it this way so I can lock this clip in from this side. And make sure that this little fork locks in to that tab on the injector. That's it.
That's locked in. Repeat the step seven more times. I always recommend replacing all the injectors at once, not just one or two. Let's get the fuel rail back in. Make sure you don't have it backwards. Not that the injectors would line up anyway, but you're gonna struggle for a little bit. And now, before I drop the injectors down into their holes, I'm gonna spray them all with brake parts cleaner. You can also use carp cleaner if that's what you have, but that's gonna lubricate the O-rings. The O-rings are rated for fuel, so it's, they're not gonna get damaged by a little spray here. This will allow you to just slide them in, and it's just that easy. Do the same on the other side. You know you're bottomed out when the brackets line up. Mine are flush, so I'm gonna bolt them back on. That way the fuel rail doesn't move and then I'll take care of reconnecting the line. Put the bolts in, start them by hand so they don't cross thread. And then bottom them out. Once again, either use hand tools or air tools. I strongly recommend not, I strongly recommend not using electric tools. The torque for these bolts is 89 inch pounds. Let's reconnect the main fuel rail feed line, which is this one. All you have to do to connect it is just slide it on until it clicks. That's it right there. Now let's put the lock on, hook it onto the line first and then up and over the hose, just like that. Make sure it's hooked onto the back and the front. Let's plug in all the injectors now. Make sure they click and of course lock the locking tab back down so that they don't come unplugged while you're driving. I have to pull the wiring harness back into position. Let's put this back on, slide it on its rail, like a little tab on the fuel rail here. Line up the line, press it on until it clicks. There we go. Plug in the electrical connector. Make sure that locks in and clicks. This didn't really have much of a lock, it kind of just sat here. Plug in the alternator wire, make sure that clicks. Let's get this bracket reattached. Push it down, put that 10 millimeter nut back on, and snug it up. It doesn't have to be very tight, you don't want to break anything. Let's get this PCV line rerouted to the back of the valve cover on this side and underneath the wiring harness and onto the intake on this end. Make sure it clicks on both ends. Before you lock it down there though, turn it and lock it into the top of the intake. There we go. Now push it on the back of the valve cover. Once it clicks, you're good to go. Install the engine cover retainer stud. Use a 10 millimeter wrench to tighten it up. Just snug it. Resecure any wiring harnesses that you may have unsecured to do the job. Make sure everything is routed properly so nothing gets in the way of any moving components or exhaust. Moving on to the other side, let's reconnect injectors on this side as well so we can set the wiring harness back into position. Once again, make sure you connect the correct connectors to the correct injectors and lock them down once you're connected. Any other retainers that you removed, clip them back on, put these hoses back on. Reconnect the map sensor. Make sure that clicks. Put the wiring harnesses back underneath this intake uh, hold down bracket. And if you unbolted it, bolt it back up. Let's get the intake snorkel piece back on. Line it up on the throttle body and on the intake side first. There we go. And then on the air filter housing side. I like to tighten these by hand so I can feel when they're getting snug. I don't want to over tighten these, otherwise they need to be replaced. You know it's tight enough when not only does it feel tight, but you move this and this part that's clamped down does not move. Do the same to the other clamp. And reinstall your engine cover if your engine had one. If you removed your relay or the fuse and you haven't put it back yet, go ahead and put it back and put the cover back on for the fuse panel, the fuse box. There we go, make sure it's locked on. Let's reconnect the batteries now. It does not matter which one you start with if you have two batteries. I'm just gonna start with this one. Place the negative terminal over the negative post of the battery and with your 10 millimeter socket, carefully snug up this mounting nut on the terminal and hold it from spinning if necessary. 
Once you get it snug enough, it should stop spinning. Give it a quick squeeze. Give it about an eighth of a turn after it bottoms out. If you cannot move this terminal back and forth, you're good to go. Let's move on to the other one. Grab that terminal, place it over the battery, and just like the other one, tighten up that 10 millimeter nut. Once it bottoms out, give it about an eighth of a turn at most. Definitely not more than that. It's tight, it doesn't move. At this point inside the vehicle, you're gonna to wanna to put the key in the ignition, turn it to the on position, you're gonna hear that fuel pump run. This is priming the system at this point. It's pushing fuel through the lines, creating pressure, and hopefully pushing the air out. I'm gonna cycle the key a few times because the fuel pump only runs for a few seconds. If you're in a quiet environment, you can even hear it run, actually. At this point, let's try to start it up. Perfect. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.